not everybody who even uses data with some regularity is familiar with, and that is uh, a little quirk about the way that um, uh, the, re the replace command works in Stata. And the way that replace works in Stata is a little bit unusual in that, uh, so you're familiar with the replace command, where uh, you replace some variable, you can say something like, okay, I'm going to replace uh, x equal to 2 if you know some condition applies. And that will replace all the values of x equal to 2 for the ones that that condition applies for. Uh, but the way that Stata does this in particular is it will do this for the first observation, it will complete it, and then it will do it for the second observation. And it will complete that, and then it will do it for the third observation, and then the fourth observation, and so on down the list. Now, that doesn't seem like it's anything, but that actually means something interesting, is that uh, if you refer to the observation above when you are doing your replace, it will wait for the above one to finish before it moves on, which means that replace essentially has this sort of cascading down effect. Uh, where if you uh, if you make a change on one level and refer to that change, it will cascade down for you. It will just sort of move down like a cascade. So let me give you a quick example of how this works. I'm going to create a variable that's just equal to one um, uh, or equal to the ID. Now let's say, for example, uh, that we're looking at this data here, but I hadn't actually gotten the ID. Uh, let's say I'd gotten some sort of ID. Uh, that is either maybe it's a string, so it's not that convenient, or they left it out entirely. We just have this month variable, and I know that when we get to the end of this month variable, it's a new year or a new ID, but I don't actually have the ID variable. So how can I fix it? How can I create that ID variable if I don't actually have it? So one thing that we can do, so let's imagine that we just have the month variable, so we're going to create the ID variable that you see there from the month variable. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a uh, something to start me out with that I'm going to actually have cascade down. So first, I'm going to just generate uh, a new variable. I'm going to say that this is the, uh, the new ID just equal to 1. Great. We started. OK? So now what I want to do is I want to go down the list, and every time I see the month 1 again, I know that I've started a new year, and so I want to increment this ID by one. And I don't just want to do that. I want to then take that increment ID. So this will become two, right? It'll say, okay, oop, I just found a one. So I'm going to make this a two. And then I want this two to, put, to continue on down. I want these all to be two. So I get down here to another month one, and then that'll be three. And then I want that three to pull all the way down. Okay, so how can I do that uh, with one easy command? So all I'm going to do is I'm going to say replace uh, new ID equal to new ID and a square bracket underscore n minus 1. So let's get on what's going on here. So first of all, this underscore n is an extremely useful thing. If you've never used it before and you're trying to work with data in Stata, I just don't even imagine how you're doing that. What, what underscore n does is it uh, basically stores the, the observation number that you're looking at. So right here, you can see that's a, the third observation in the data set. So for this, ver for this observation, underscore lowercase n is a 3. Okay? So underscore n minus 1 must mean the observation above that. All right, so if I'm looking at the third observation and I say n minus 1, it's going to be referring to the second observation. So what this command right here will do is it will replace new ID equal to the new ID above it. Okay? Uh, and, uh, but I don't just want to do that. If I did that right now, all that would happen is it would replace every observation with the 1 that is already above it, so nothing would change. I also want to make it increment every time it hits a new month of 1. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do plus, and then parentheses, month equals 1. So what that will do is it will go down the list, okay? And it will say, okay, month, uh, um, uh, here month is equal to, uh, so I'm going to go down. Here month is equal to 1, okay? So I'm first going to look above. I'm going to see the new ID of the observation above is 1. I also notice that in this observation, month is equal to 1, so I'm going to add 1. So this will become a 2. Then we're going to go down here. Month is not equal to 1 anymore, so we're not incrementing, but we are copying what we see up here. So this is, so this is going to become a 2 as well. So if I run this, uh, as it is right now, however, everything will become missing. It will not work. Here, I'll show you. Boom. Didn't work. Now, why is that? Now, the reason why that is is because this underscore n minus 1 is always referring to the observation above, but what about the first observation? There isn't an observation above that, so it's pointing to a missing. So it makes everything missing, because this becomes missing first, 
and then that missingness drags all the way down. So let's recreate our new our new ID. Okay, and then let's do this again, but let's skip that first observation. So I'm just going to put an if underscore n is greater than one. So now it'll only do this for every observation that is greater than one. Let's see that in action. So there you can go. You can see it worked right there. One 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 one. It's the new month becomes two, and this is matching exactly that ID variable on the left. So I've recreated it without actually having to have access to it. Uh, and this has a number of other observations, uh, another, another number of other applications. Uh, you can use it anytime you're trying to create IDs like this. It's helpful, for example, let's say you have a year variable that is uh, not linear. Okay, so let's say you have a year variable. Let's create a new year variable. Let's say that everything, uh, uh, that the year is 2000 and whatever the ID is, and then the month is whatever the month is. So let's say we have a year, a year variable that's like this. So generate uh, year month equal to, um, 2000 plus new ID. Uh, times 100 plus a month. Okay, so then we have this year month variable. Let's say this is some time series data. Okay. Now we have a problem here. If we wanted to include this as a predictor in a model or something like that, right? Because you can see that the difference between 2001 December and 2002 January is uh, only one month but it is a big number difference, right? Uh, so if you were using time series, of course, this would not be an issue, but if we were just wanted to include this as a variable, that, that'd be a problem. So we can create a uh, linear version of this year month variable uh, using this exact same procedure. Uh, so what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Uh, now here, it's gonna be pretty easy to do, but let's, let's say, for example, that we had multiple uh, observations. So let's expand, let's double this data set. Okay, so now we have two observations for every month. Okay, so now we can't just do this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five, because these 2001, you know, observations down here would get much bigger numbers when actually we want them to also be 2001. So what are we going to do? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to sort by year month. So now we have those two 2001 observations up there. We're going to do the same thing we did before. So we're going to generate the linear year month. Set it equal to one. Okay, so that first one is one. So now I want it to increment every time it hits a new month in general, right? Uh, so I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do replace linear year month equal to linear year month square bracket underscore n minus one plus. Now this time I can't just look for a month equal to one because you know that's not the case here. But what I am looking for is a change in the year month. I'm going to say I'm going to increment it if year month is not equal to the year month above. Okay, so that's going to look here. It's going to say, OK. Uh, so here I'm going to set it equal to what it is above. And I'm going to check, is this equal to that? And they're equal, so I'm not going to increment anything. And we're going to go down here. Okay, I'm going to set it to what's above, 1. And then I'm going to check, are these equal? And they're not. So I'm going to increment. Right? And then that's going to cascade down just like we want it. And then, of course, don't forget if underscore n is greater than 1. Now let's do this. Oh, and look, we got exactly what we want. We can skip, stick that into a regression. Um, this has a lot of applications, I find. It's a little bit kludgy, uh, but it is very useful. Uh, it's one good way of getting around the fact that Stata doesn't deal with hierarchical data very well. So if you have, for example, uh, panel data where you have a person within a year within a sample or something like that. Uh, this can get around that. Uh, a lot of the time, uh, what this is doing can be done by an egen command instead. Egen, of course, is a very useful command. I would recommend checking it out if you're not familiar with it. It is one of the best things about Stata. Um, however, there are also some situations in which egen is not particularly well suited, like, for example, this, this thing where I'm creating the uh, year, the linear year month variable. Um, and uh, uh, or you could you could also do an encode for some of the applications that we have here. So, for example, um, I could, uh, I, I could there's many different ways you can do a lot of these things. However, eGen is the big one, but eGen is a lot slower than this process. This process is much faster than eGen, which is one good application of this. Uh, let me show you just to finish out, and, and I'm not going to show you anything new, but just give you an application that I've actually used this for. So here's some data that I have. Uh, that I pulled from uh, Google Trends, where I had a, a name of a school and I had some keywords associated uh, with that, that school, that university. And I pulled down some Google Trends data. And I had this problem where I realized after getting all my data 
that, oh, whoops, some of these university names uh, are uh, copies. Sometimes the same name will pop up twice. And so I, if I wanted to get an ID and I didn't have this school ID quite yet, or this school ID variable didn't work properly, um, if I wanted to get an ID variable for the colleges, uh, I can't just do an encode, right? If I did the, the, the command encode, what that would do is that would um, give me a numerical encoding for the school name variables, but if there was a copy of the school name when it was actually two different schools, wouldn't work. It would give me the same code. I don't want that. But I have this data structured in such a way where I know, well, okay, uh, there might be the same school name multiple times, but not consecutively. So Youngstown, there might be some other Youngstown State University somewhere else in this data, but it won't be right after this one. The way that I collected the data, I just know that that's true. So what I can do with this is I can use the exact same process that I did before. So I'm going to do uh, generate college ID equal to one, okay? And I'm going to just cascade down, and every time I see a new college name, I'm going to increment that ID. Uh, what this is going to do is make sure that I have a unique numerical ID for every college name, and if there's a double uh, college name, if there's a, uh, the same name applying to two different colleges, it's still going to give me two different IDs. You replace college ID equal to college ID underscore n minus one, plus, and I'm going to increment if the college name changes. So if school name is not equal to school name underscore n minus one, if underscore n is greater than one. There we go. We have this nice college ID variable. Right, that's it. I uh, hope you have found this useful.